All right, guys, Mass 6620. Uh, we're going to start something today called logistic regression. And we uh, touched on this a little bit in Math 5500, but uh, we're going to get into it a lot more uh, in this class. Uh, I think it's a natural uh, transition from log linear analysis, which we um, uh, just spent, what, about three weeks of our life uh, taking a look at. And... Uh, you know, this deals with, um, you know, looking, examining the relationships uh, between categorical variables. And uh, so I figured the next natural topic, again, would be um, to uh, kind of keep it in the categorical sense and, and look at logistic regression. Now, guys, uh, I hope you remember from um, Math 5500 that um, logistic regression is a regression technique that allows us to predict uh, a uh, 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 our dependent variable, which is dichotomously coded as zero and one, but I think it also allows us to step back and kind of re-examine, uh, you know, important goals in education research. Uh, for example, uh, if if we wanted to look at the relationship as we did, um, uh, you know, in the previous video, a professor. Uh, versus uh, instruction, and I think the instruction, I forget now, but I think it was uh, traditionally or uh, online, and uh, uh, versus success, you know, in, in education research, we could have two different goals here. First of all, do we want a statistical procedure that explains the relationship between the two? And if we want that, then this whole log linear analysis uh, is the tool for us. It did the trick, as we saw in the previous video. But a lot of times in uh, education research, we want to create a model that could actually be used uh, further and, and, and used uh, in the sense of prediction. And guys, if we wanted to do that, what we may be interested in, in looking at is can we take the professor and the level of instruction, and again, if I remember correctly, that was either a lecture or online, and use these two things in harmony, if you will, uh, to predict uh, course success. And, uh, you know, this stuff over here is fine and dandy, the log linear analysis, what we've been taking a look at, but... Uh, in moving forward, um, we, we see in uh, education research that uh, the ability to create models that can predict can be extremely uh, important, okay? Now, um, let's, uh, first of all, I mean, again, let's just, uh, let's just keep this, uh, everything uh, clear. Uh, logistic regression, um, has you know a variety uh, of, um, of of inputs of predictors, uh, but the output is always considered as zero and one. So it's considered as uh, you know su uh, succeed, fail to succeed, pregnant, not pregnant, uh, survive, didn't survive, uh, true or false, um, you know things of that nature. So. Um, what we're going to see is we're going to see the logistic regression and multiple regression, something you guys should be very good at uh, and will even get better after taking Math 6500. Uh, these two things are very, very closely related. For example, let's say that we have a goal of... Uh, uh, taking the following predictors, and let's just say we have ACT, high school GPA, uh, and let's throw in some, you know, self-efficacy stuff that seems to be uh, on, the, on the, the hot topic today. And we want to take this and we want to use these to predict course success. And it actually turns out the way that we define our research goals would be uh, the, the determining factor in what model we used. 
Guys, of course, success was GPA, which we know ranges from zero to four. Then we have a continuous uh, uh, outcome variable, dependent variable. So guys, in this case, we would implement a multiple regression model. However, if we define course success as, let's say, zero as a C minus or lower, and let's define one as a C or higher, then we've dichotomously coded. There's that going again. I don't like that. <laughs> I don't know why that thing resets itself. Uh, but uh, we, we've uh, dichotomously coded cor course success. Uh, and in this uh, situation, uh, it would be uh, a logistic regression model. Now, you might say, well, which one's better? I, I don't think either one of them's better. I think it's just a matter of the way that the data is presented. Um, multiple regression is much easier to run. It's much easier to interpret. But um, I don't know what it is, but I just, I've always just liked um, uh, logistic regression. I remember seeing it back in grad school. And it was just something that, uh, that, that just kind of captured my imagination for some silly reason. Um, now, guys, keep in mind that uh, this logistic regression stuff extends beyond uh, education research. Clearly, we could get into medical research and so on and so forth. But, uh, you know, trying to get you guys ready for your master's thesis, those of you that are going to stick around for the entire program, uh, our focus is going to be on education research and logistic regression. So, guys, uh, the procedure extends beyond zeros and ones. Uh, so, you know, logistic regression... is a situation where our output is dichotomous, dichotomously coded as zero and one. Uh, we could also extend this into, and we may, I don't know how far we're going to go on this, uh, to ordinal regression. And this would be a situation where we would have uh, ordering, uh, uh, a dependent variable that was ordered, uh, you know, first place, second place, third place. Uh, categorical, but nevertheless, there's a natural ordering. And then there's actually another uh, where we could just look at it, just a strictly categorical response, uh, but uh, we're not going to get into that uh, in, uh, in this class. So guys, in moving forward, I'm a, I'm a huge fan when you learn something new, especially when what you're learning new is kind of uh, uh, challenging. I think it's always... Uh, uh, a good teaching method to embed what you're learning in something that you already know how to do. And uh, I want to do that uh, for you in this case. Uh, if we think about back to linear regression versus logistic regression, and uh, linear regression, again, something we studied ad nauseum back in, in 5500, uh, we remember studying, or at least I hope you remember studying, the simple linear regression model. And the simple linear regression model was just one predictor. Uh, we would just call it beta 1. And, of course, uh, we have our error. Uh, we move into a multiple regression model. Multiple regression model just says we have multiple predictors. And uh, so on and so forth. So guys, uh, here, uh, Y is a predicted outcome uh, from a collection uh, or a combination uh, of our variables. And I want you to think about these Y sub I's as continuous or uh, uh, quantitative uh, dependent variable. Now, in a logistic regression model, things change a little bit, and they get a little bit more uh, confusing. Not much. But in a simple logistic regression, what we are seeking to uh, predict is not really uh, the, the Y's values uh, that uh, are similar to our data set, but what we're interested in predicting are the probabilities of the Y's. So we'll just call that P of Y for the probability of Y. And in the simple linear regression model, the 
the equivalent to the simple linear regression model uh, would be that uh, the probability of y sub i is 1 divided by uh, 1 plus e raised to the negative uh, b0 plus b1 times uh, x, x1 sub i, x sub, uh, x sub 1 i. Uh, the multiple, as I'm sure you can uh, figure out for this, is um, give me some room to write here. Is uh, uh, is this nasty looking mess? And guys, again, this uh, piece of uh, p of y i is the probability of y. Uh, given x1, x2, up to uh, up to xn. Guys, this is uh, annoying. All right, so there you go. All right, and again, I think uh, it's just hard to remember because it's, it's, it was last summer, but it hadn't been that long, actually. Uh, but uh, it's just hard to remember how far we got uh, on this in 5500, but it seems to me as I, as I thought it through, we got to it at the very end and we run a little bit, a uh, little short on time and it doesn't seem like we got into it uh, adequately. So guys, um, you know, what I hope you know right now is that regression, you know, standard, the simple linear regression and logistic regression are pretty similar. Uh, but remember for uh, linear regression, the observed data must uh, contain a linear relationship uh, for a, uh, a linear regression model to be appropriate. And, uh, you know, that sounds like uh, a lot of big, <laughs> big fancy words, but that's just saying if we look at uh, the relationship between X and Y and, and we get something like this, then uh, the linear model uh, is, is most likely not appropriate. We'd want to get in probably to an exponential model. So anyway, uh, we just want the observed data to, uh, to, to have a linear relationship. Uh, for a linear model to uh, to be appropriate. Now, kind of the drum roll for all this is uh, when our outcome is zero and one, uh, then uh, this is not possible. And what you end up getting, if you want to actually take a look at, at, at a graph of something like this, what you end up getting is if you, uh, if you look at your x, and over here you're trying to predict the probability of y, but you know, when you look at your, your relationship, uh, you're just looking at the outcome. And you know, this is what you're trying to predict, but when you examine the observed data, you know, it either happened or it didn't. We'll use the model to predict the probability, but we, but the observed uh, data will just be zeros and ones. And what you get into is you get into things like this, where for a certain subset of x, the event didn't occur, and then for a certain subset of uh, x, the, the event did occur. And you can see that if we try to fit this with a straight line with a linear model, it's just not doing a good job. Uh, a model that looks like it would be much more appropriate would be something like the inverted S. Uh, well, not inverted S, but kind of uh, a uh, weirdly drawn uh, S. So, guys, uh, our solution here uh, is to do the following. And you should know where we're headed with this after your extensive <laughs> the extensive presentation of categorical analysis using log linear analysis, uh, our solution is going to be we're going to transform the data uh, using a logarithmic transformation. Okay, and uh, you know I, I want to kind of just kind of put yourself to the to the test. See if anything stuck from log linear analysis. Why do we do this? 
And uh, some of you are probably telling me the answer, and some of you are th sitting there thinking, I'm sure glad I'm not sitting in a classroom where he can ask me this face-to-face. -face. But <laughs> guys, the reason we do this is that uh, it permits us to express a nonlinear relationship or a nonlinear relation in a linear way, just like we did in uh, log linear analysis. So guys, uh, at the end of the day, I kind of feel like there should be a drum roll for this one because it's kind of significant. You know, a paper set up here. Uh, the logistic regression equation is based on the principle that a multiple regression equation is expressed in logarithmic terms. Uh, and this allows us to overcome the violation of the linear uh, assumption. So again, the logistic regression equation Always knew in, high, in uh, college when something was important because the professor would write it on the board, not just say it. <laughs> so uh, hint, hint. Uh, the logistic regression equation is based on the principle that a multiple regression equation is expressed in logarithmic terms uh, thus overcoming the violation of the linearity assumption. All right, so guys, uh, pretty pretty uh, critical stuff right there. And certainly going to set the set the um, the foundation for what uh, what we're getting ready to do. Hey guys, I'll just go ahead and tell you, there's no need to bring up R in this, uh, in this, this video. We'll get into all that uh, in the next two or three, even four videos. But we're just, uh, we're building the foundation today, setting the concrete block, if you will, for, for the, uh, uh, actually uh, carrying out, uh, out these models. All right, gang, uh, just as you would expect, uh, seeing the similarities between not only this logistic regression and log linear analysis, but multiple, or logistic regression and simple linear regression, multiple regression as we did in 5500. Uh, it's kind of, I kind of see it uh, sort of in the middle of the two. But anyway, uh, as you would expect, uh, this observed and expected uh, dialogue we used uh, back in 5500 with regression, oh, I'm sorry, we used this in chi-square in log linear analysis and we used observed and uh, predicted when we were in uh, regression. So those are going to come back in and, and play a role. But guys, uh, what we want to do here is, uh, is since it's you know, logistic regression, we want to focus on the dialogue between uh, observed and predicted. So guys, uh, in, in terms of the logistic regression, uh, the observed data, uh, for the ith person will be uh, 0 or 1 and the predicted for the ith person will be the probability uh, uh, of, of the uh, of the event uh, for the ith person, you guys clearly probability is going to fall um, somewhere between zero and one zero. Uh, you know, no chance it's going to happen. One is uh, it's certainly going to happen. So, all right, guys, let's uh, let's let's change our gears into or change gears into um, 
model evaluation. You know, how do we uh, create a model? How do we know it's, uh, it's an effective model? Well, we're going to get into about four different ways. Uh, they're going to uh, play critical roles, key roles, once we get into, um, in, into looking at problems. Uh, the first way, uh, you know, it's, it, it's, it's clearly important, um, is uh, called the log likelihood. And you should remember log likelihood from uh, log linear analysis. It was uh, at the cornerstone, uh, uh, you know, a central focus of that process. And it turns out that we can calculate this thing by uh, taking the sum from i equal 1 to n of uh, y sub i times the natural log of the probability of y sub i plus 1 minus y sub i times the natural log of 1 minus uh, p of y sub i. Let me make sure I've got that right. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, guys, this is just uh, just a way of summing up probabilities, and uh, it's uh, it's also kind of gives us a chance to step back and and, and think about something that we encountered uh, when we looked at regression uh, from an ANOVA perspective, and uh, this is uh, kind of the counterpart to sum of squares error in regression, uh, this log likelihood is the counterpart to the sum of squares for the error term uh, in regression as this is in, in logistic regression. And uh, what I mean by that is this sum is expressing unexplained error. So you can think about this, uh, you, you know, Bigger is not better in this case uh, because we get in a situation where when the sum of squares is larger, it means we, we have uh, less explained, uh, uh, less of the, the error uh, is explained. Uh, and our explained error here just uh, says uh, similarly so for the logistic regression model. So guys, a uh, high log likelihood uh, is indicator of unexplained information. Uh, and, uh, of course, a large uh, log likelihood value would indicate a poor fitting model, just like a large uh, sum of squares would uh, in a standard regression model. So, guys, again, uh, you know, this regression and logistic regression uh, ca contains some, some similar stuff, uh, but, uh, again, it's completely, uh, completely different language uh, and kind of completely different, different dialogue that we have. Uh, a second one, and I think this one's far more important, and I say uh, a second, uh, I mean it's a, a second way of assessing uh, the fit of our model. And uh, the second one that we run into is called a deviance uh, statistic. And uh, it is typically, in outputs, you'll see it as negative 2LL. And uh, once you see how it's calculated, it, uh, it actually uh, makes sense uh, because a, a deviance is something very, very easy to, um, To calculate your deviance is just minus 2 times the log likelihood. So guys, whatever we get up here as the log likelihood, when we multiply by negative 2, uh, we get what's called the deviance statistic. And you guys are going to be doing this in your homework assignment, uh, which is, um, this is week 4, so it'll be coming up next week. Uh, every fifth week you'll get, uh, get an assignment. So uh, guys, the beauty of this is uh, this deviance statistic follows a chi-square distribution and what this does is it allows us to uh, calculate p-values 
and ultimately make decisions like uh, we're so accustomed to doing with this uh, this magical threshold of point point oh five. As it turns out, deviances are also uh, extremely helpful in comparing models. And I don't mean comparing models for two different types of problem. I mean comparing models in terms of having a set of predictors and wondering if you should add another predictor or quite possibly subtract a predictor. So it's uh, really good within the, uh, the same education goal of, of uh, uh, comparing two models. Now, uh, let's say, for example, that for model one, and I'm just going to call this M1 because I'm not creative enough to come up with anything else. Uh, let's say for this that uh, we want to um, predict course success 0 and 1. And our only predictor that we're going to use is ACT. So guys, we could clearly create a model for our deviant statistic for model one. Uh, we're going to look at model two and we're investigating, and we'll just call this M2, still looking at course success. But we want to look at whether we should bring in a high school GPA. And we clearly could create uh, or calculate another deviant statistic, and I'll just call this deviant sub M2, because um, it's our second model. Now, what we can do is we can put all this together and calculate uh, a test statistic. for the improvement of the model. And uh, what we do here is we take, uh, we create again a chi-square statistic and we take uh, minus two log likelihood for model one. Minus minus two log likelihood of model two. Something that would drive our introductory algebra students crazy is the minus and the minus. So we end up with two log likelihood model two, minus two log likelihood model one. Now guys, this is gonna follow a chi-square distribution with degrees of freedom uh, K for M2 minus K for M1, where K is the number of predictors plus one. Guys, don't forget the one. The one's for your intercept. So if you have an intercept-only model, then your K is going to be equal to one. And for each additional predictor, uh, clearly indicate or clearly would increase. Uh, the uh, chi-square, or I'm sorry, the uh, degrees of freedom for the chi-square statistic uh, by one. All right, gang, so uh, number three. Let's see what i got going on here. What did I do? Uh, I've done, uh, let's see, deviance and log likelihood. Okay, so number three, guys, is going to be uh, uh, kind of a traditional R squared you know an R squared if you remember you know back from simple linear regression this was just a coefficient of determination and it just told us the percentage of uh, of uh, uh, well, I've lost my place here uh, it just tells you the percentage of uh, variation uh, in the model that, uh, or the, the percentage of total variation that's uh, explained by the variation in the model. Uh, and uh, it, it turns out in, in uh, logistic regression, there are actually four ways we can do this. This might be a bonus question, name the four R statistics for logistic regression. Probably not. 
I gotta be honest with you, I'd have to look up one of them. And I'm not even sure I can pronounce that last one. Nagel Kirky. I have no idea. But guys, the one that uh, that that I want to focus on, it seems like the one that's um, probably the most commonly reported is the Hosmer and Lemschau. Uh, and guys, the calculation for it, very, very simple. So you take uh, negative two, the, well, the deviant statistic for model two over uh, the uh, deviant statistic for, for model one. Guys, one more thing, uh, in 6500, uh, you're going to get into things called AIC, or I believe you are. I don't know if I'm going to be teaching it. Uh, in fact, I'm pretty sure I'm not. Uh, you're going to get into AIC and BIC. Now, uh, the A stands for A-K-A-I-K-E. -E. The B stands for Bayes, and then the IC in both Uh, situation stands for information criterion. And uh, guys, these things collectively uh, just judge the fit of our model. And uh, what they really, it's, it's more than that. I need to be uh, a little more thorough on this situation. Uh, they judge, uh, they judge a, uh, uh, they address an issue uh, that, that happens with R squared uh, naturally, uh, regardless of really what's going on with our model, as the number of predictors increase, R squared will increase. And it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter whether you can you put the extra predictor in and it's a good predictor, bad predictor, it uh, or an effective predictor, significant predictor, probably more appropriate. R squared is just going to naturally uh, go up. So uh, AIC and BIC those give us uh, a criterion by which we can uh, better, um, uh, uh, you know, I guess better use uh, is, is a better use than uh, the R squared. Uh, guys, turns out there these are super, super easy to calculate. The interpretation is going to be a little, a uh, little bit uh, crazy. You guys remember K is the number of predictors, uh, uh, including the uh, intercept. And this is um, hmm. guys, I forget. Um, Hmm, hmm, hmm. I believe that's the natural log of n there. You know what? I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to get back with you on that one. It's either n or k. I should have written it down, shouldn't I? Uh, that doesn't look right. I thought that was log of k, but no, it seemed like okay. Uh, guys, get back with me. Nat, you with me? Uh, <laughs> keep me honest, buddy. Uh, so, so when, when I post this video, uh, someone uh, chime in and let me uh, let me, let me uh, verify that. I'm pretty sure it's in, but I look at that and it just uh, it, it kind of isn't completely making sense. But we'll go with that, and uh, and I'll, again, I'll take a look at it. Now, guys, what I want you to do now is I want to switch our focus. from our model evaluation to predictor evaluation. And if you think about it, what would we do in linear regression? Well, we would calculate our coefficient. We would calculate the standard error. 
we would get a test statistic. We have this underlying probability distribution that we could use to calculate a p-value. And if our p-value is higher than 0.05, then we would consider that predictor not to be significant in predicting whatever we're trying to predict. If it's uh, uh, less than 0.05, we would consider that to be a statistically significant predictor. Um, it turns out that uh, for logistic regression, uh, what we rely on here is called the walled statistic. And you're going to love the walled statistic as you start messing with these things because they're really super easy to calculate. And uh, they're just as you would expect, uh, the beta coefficient divided by the standard uh, error for the beta. And guys, what this does, it gives us the um, opportunity to calculate a p-value. And if it's significant, you know, less than 0.05, that's typically what we use for the threshold, uh, then we conclude the predictor uh, is making a significant prediction, or significant contribution, I should say, uh, to the prediction uh, of the outcome y. If it's not uh, uh, significant, then we conclude the predictor is not making a significant uh, predictor. Uh, it's easy to, 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 to calculate. Uh, it allows us to calculate p-values and make uh, what we call statistical decisions. But guys, the most uh, important feature that we'll use uh, in, in terms of interpreting the coefficients is called but you didn't think you were going to see this again after leaving uh, log, or log linear analysis, but you do. It's called um, uh, the odds ratio. Guys, these things are super easy to uh, calculate. It's just E raised to the B power, B is the beta coefficient, or a lot of textbooks uh, obviously just do EXP to the B. Uh, guys, this pro provides an easy interpretation. It tells us the change in the odds. Uh, 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 resulting, well, it tells us, uh, yeah, the change in the odds resulting from a one unit increase in each predictor. All right, and uh, clearly this is going to be different for categorical data, for a categorical variable versus a quantitative. For example, categorical data or categorical variable gender where zero is male and one is female. Uh, a one unit increase is going to completely change from one gender to the other. Whereas a quantitative uh, variable, maybe a 26 ACT to a 27 ACT is not quite uh, as, as big a jump as, as completely jumping from, from one gender to the other. But nevertheless, a one unit increase in a categorical predictor is the same is interpreted the same way as a one unit increase in a quantitative predictor because it uh, just tells us the change in odds uh, for uh, a one unit uh, uh, prediction. So guys, uh, that's just about it. Uh, the next video is going to get super fun. At least I think it is. Uh, I just like this stuff. I don't know why, but I've just always liked logistic regression. And um, hopefully I can bring my enthusiasm over uh, to you and when you you know 20 years from now whatever it is you're out of grad school you'll say well okay probably not uh guys uh i, I don't know if you need to but uh i mean keep in mind odds versus probabilities um uh, uh but uh, uh really keep in mind um uh, as we talked about back in uh, log linear analysis the odds ratio uh, if we run from 0 to 1, and of course on up, 
when we get uh, an odds between uh, 0 and 1 or less than 1, uh, we say if the predictor increases, the odds decrease. Whereas clearly from uh, above 1 and on up, it tells us as the predictor increases, uh, the odds increase. So, gang, that's all I got. Uh, next video, we'll get into um, uh, methods. We'll get into assumptions. We'll get into what can go wrong. Uh, there's an iterative process. Uh, an iteration process that uh, statistical software packages use. Uh, you can use maximum likelihood estimation, but uh, uh, logistic regression doesn't come up with a, a nice, simple, closed form like we get in simple linear regression. So we have to use uh, trickier, well, not really trickier, but it's just we have to use an iterative process to actually come up with the beta coefficients. So uh, we're going to talk about that, and we're going to talk about, the, you know, sometimes we get, uh, uh, we implement iterations that don't converge, and, you know, what, what kind of things in logistic regression can cause that. So, guys, you're going to get a very thorough presentation of logistic regression over uh, probably the next couple of weeks. So, uh, guys, have a good one.